Hello, everyone, and welcome to Music and Coffee, a show dedicated to kicking back and sipping on some live entertainment. In this episode, we'll be dissecting the mind of a prolific local musician. He comes from the heart of Erie, which is probably why he's got so much soul. So without further ado, Teddy Rankin, thanks for coming all the way to Edinburgh University on a Monday. Oh, thanks so much for having me. It's, uh, it's my honor to be here. Really appreciate it. To give everyone some context on where Teddy and I know each other from, well, he's a former co-worker, a fellow colleague, and most of all, a friend. And it wasn't even until I invited him over with a bunch of friends one weekend that I realized this kid had the voice of an angel. I remember the first time I heard him cover Blackbird by the Beatles, and I got the chills. And since then, I've made it a point to keep up on his work. So Teddy, tell us why you started playing music while I pour you a hot cup of gel. Oh, thanks for the coffee. Um, I, cam I come from a musical family. Um, I, I do remember, like, in my childhood, uh, a moment of you have a great inspiration for me. I'm actually I'm a cancer survivor, so uh, I had to get treated in Pittsburgh. And on those two-hour car rides, me and my family would always listen to the Beatles. And uh, I'm a huge nerd uh, for the Beatles, and, and I love their music, and, and that, I think, is really where the, the base of my music is from and why I, why I play, and, you know, really, my dad's a great inspiration to me, too, his, his music. He's always played in the living room and, and all that, so it's just really what I was raised on. That's incredible. So at what age were you like, yeah, all right, this is probably my thing? And how have you managed to stay relevant to the music scene since then? Well, I I think that I'd say the moment that I realized that it was my thing was uh, in high school, my freshman year. There was a Christmas assembly, and I was asked to play at it. And I wrote kind of like Weird Al Yankovic words to Silver Bells uh, that was about the apocalypse. Because uh, thank you so much. Absolutely. The uh, the assembly was on that uh, in 2012 on the day the world was supposed to end. So um, I sang the song uh, Silver Bells about like the world ending and people really laughed and loved it and stood up and chanted my name even and it was just crazy. And uh, thank you so much. So from there, I've just kind of been addicted to that kind of reaction to music. And, and for me, it's it's more like really within myself to like try to get an audience to to enjoy it as much as I enjoy doing it. For sure. So every time you perform for people, what are some of the things that are going through your head? Are you imagining like a nice picnic in the park? What's the image you're seeing when you're uh, up on stage strumming the guitar? Are you nervous? Are you happy? What's... Uh, yeah, um, I am nervous. I'm very happy as well, but I think the main thing that I'm thinking about is, uh, you know, playing the song and trying to play it as well as I can. I just, I did a gig recently where as I was doing my set, the radio in the bar turned on and that like made me lose my concentration. And uh, I, it isn't until that kind of thing happens that you realize how much you're really concentrating when you're playing. So uh, I think and certain songs that have powerful words, and I try to write songs that, that are meaningful to me, um, when I'm singing them and performing them, I always get into a headspace that's, you know, in the moment. When I write that song, I'm feeling a certain way. It's why I wrote it. So I try to revisit that feeling. And sometimes even, like, if I'm in a really good mood someday, and then I have to go play a set later that night, and I play a song that gets me back into a mood that I didn't really want to be in, it's sometimes a curse and a blessing, but I think it, it comes through in the songs and, and comes back and makes the performance really special every time. Do you ever feel like you've made a spiritual connection with a group of people just by singing to them? Well, that's certainly the hope. I'd, I'd like to. Um, it's definitely a, a spiritual exercise for me. I think it's very therapeutic uh, for me to play and, and for my spirituality it's really where I find the most connection to the rest of the world, and um, I hope that I that I get that same reaction to it. But you know, you never really know. Sometimes the people aren't really listening that well, or some people just 
it's not their thing. Well, know? I went to your uh, release show for yeah. your CD, Omitting the Middle. Yeah. Which you were so kind to bring. Oh, thank you. Uh, people seemed engaged there. Yeah. That was at the uh, lighthouse on the peninsula. What, yeah. What was your inspiration for this album? Oh, geez. Well, this album is actually, I'm not super proud of the inspiration of it because um, I feel like I, I, I don't know. I think I, I am proud of it, but it was a relationship that I was in. Uh, I was in a, like a committed relationship for four years with a person and uh, it ended. And so this album, it's called Omitting the Middle and it's really the story of that relationship um, you know, before the the beginning of it and omitting the middle and then the second half of the album is, you know, kind of after it ended and, and my feelings that way. And I hadn't talked to that girl in a while, uh, like a year and a half since we'd broke up. And the day that the album released, she texted me and was like, hey. <laughs> and I was like, oh, no. Wow. <laughs> I didn't think you were going like, to listen to this. How did she feel about it? Uh, she, you know, she was really nice and said she she liked it and she was happy that I made it. So yeah. that made me feel good. So I guess the uh, the general vibe that I'm getting is music is your therapy. So how do you... Absolutely. What's uh, your message for people who might be going through a similar situation? Is, uh, I guess, is there anything particular about the way you make your music that comes as a form of therapy um, that you could offer to anyone? Well, I write pretty often, and I write as a form of my own emotional expression. Um, you know, sometimes there's things that people say, like, oh, you should write a song about about this. This is something that you should write a song about. But I can't really bring myself to do that because the way that I write is about how I'm feeling or how something, you know, I, I write often at nighttime. So it's how I'm feeling before bed a lot of times. And and so I don't really know how to, how to explain it, but I think that music is definitely therapeutic. I think poetry is therapeutic, journaling, dream journaling, any of that kind of thing, you know, just to, to keep in contact and keep a documentation of, of how you're feeling. That way, you know, you validate it, you give it its own time and space. I have been lucky enough to be able to release my little journals. You know, this is my third one. I have a fourth one on the way. And um, I don't really, I mean, I care if people listen to it, but really it's not about that. It's it's more about expression for me and, and getting those things down on paper, and working through them, you know, recording and then releasing it. And then once it's released, I feel like I can let go of it. For sure. And And sometimes that's the most rewarding part of it all you tell, know tell me about uh dream journaling oh how uh, often do you do that well i don't dream often but whenever i do wake up and remember my dream i try to write it down in my notes on my phone i actually did have a dream recently where i was walking up a staircase and there was a whole bunch of people like walking down the opposite way from me and i was like trying to walk up against the crowd and one of the people and i was singing to myself just like making up a song as I go and someone who was on the way down started singing the song I was making up like and knew what the next words were before I did oh wow and it was really crazy and I so I turned around and followed her and and we met at like a landing in the stairs and I said what other songs do you know and she sang something super beautiful and I couldn't remember that song that she sang but I remember that it was really beautiful and it almost moved me to tears in my dream and that's crazy, you know. It's that kind of thing. Like I would have definitely forgotten that if I hadn't written it down. So, so do you have a do you have a song that came from that? I don't yet, but I'm working on something because it's just something, you know. In your dreams, things can come to you that you really, you know. I think Paul McCartney said that "Let It Be" came to him in a dream, and that, you know, certain things in your subconscious get jumbled around and actually become clearer. Have you ever hit like a dry spell, like a period of, uh, I don't know, like two weeks where you're just like, I can't write anything. Yeah, and then I write about that, about not being able to write anything. Yeah, so what's that like? Um, you know, it's it's tough, but, you know, it's it's hard to really be in a dry spell when what you're writing about is just life 
and and your own emotions and even if your emotions are well i'm in a groove right now things are going all right i don't i'm not sad i'm not angry i'm not in love i'm not super happy i'm not super down well the emotion then is i'm content this is fine and it's just an easy kind of you know that that would be like when i'd write a song that's just kind of like take it easy everything's going according to plan yeah yeah what's like the most uh i don't know what emotion stands out to you the most where you're like that's the easiest to write about is it feeling content or is it maybe feeling angry or feeling like cheated or like what is well you can go through my therapist's notes on this <laughs> but uh, um i find that i I write a lot of sad songs and even like my parents and stuff they'll listen to my songs and go why don't you write any happy songs and it's just that's what's easy easiest for me to connect to and honestly how I've been feeling lately and so that's it's honest for me to you know give it it's that space for it, that feeling to exist um, but um, I think that that it's easier to write about sad things and and uh on this album i i wrote a lot about heartbreak and and those feelings on the next album um i'm feeling a lot more lost in the in my place in the world you know where do i fit in what am i going to do for the rest of my life i'm 20 now i've left school you know do i go back is do i try to find a job it's really hard to find a job you know this this world really uh our society has has made it kind of difficult to exist and how do i adapt how do i you know find myself in a place where i want to be and this journey is a little bit harder than i thought it was going to be so that's what what the next one is really focused on i feel like nowadays there's a lot of focus on going to school getting it done and then at the end you're just like where do I go from now so oh yeah exactly and and that would be easy to do you know I mean if you if you go through school and you go for something that that you get a good job from like if you want for nursing or something and you get a job that's a great way to do it but it's that's really not the reality for most people you know it's school's expensive and and life is full of twists and turns that you can't really plan for so you don't you don't know what what you're going to do and you might set out and think you know that I want to go to school for this and it ends up a few years later not being exactly what you planned on so you know for sure in the meantime uh in the meantime write about it write yeah, songs keep writing about it but hey uh what do you say you uh play some of those songs yeah i'd love to yeah, yeah. all right fantastic great Thank you so much. Yeah, for sure. Still finding out just what kind it is
the path we think we choose to take. I have to remind myself where the god or chaos reigns, the card game that we play as a dealer that's the master of our fate. Well, don't you know that I Give it up for Teddy Rankin. So Teddy, much. thank you so much for coming Thanks for out. Having me. Absolutely. I really appreciate yeah. It. Thanks for tuning in everyone. To hear more of Teddy Rankin, check him out on YouTube and Spotify. Thanks for watching.